Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the Pipe Dreams podcast. We had a little explosion there. If, uh, the beer has been aged for over a month and it just uh, basically exploded, as you can yeah. see in the video. Not totally exploded, but it's filming like crazy. But yeah, today in this video, we're going to be talking about the different types of tobacco one can choose from to smoke. There's a variety. I think there's, we're going to be talking about at least seven of them. I think they're like the main seven. Um, we'll just get right into it. Yes, yeah, so this is more of a beginner, almost like pipe smoking uh, 101. You know, maybe you're just getting new into this hobby. Maybe you got your pipe and you're just looking at, you know, the, the overwhelming amount of different types of tobacco in the market, pipe tobacco that is. And uh, we're just gonna go over some of them here. So we'll start off with the Virginias. Most, most of your tobaccos will have at least a, a small amounts of Virginias. I think the only ones that don't have it or what are the Englishes, I'm pretty sure. But Virginia tobaccos, they're known for their natural sweetness and bright flavors. It's often used as the base in pipe blends. It can range from mild to full body. So we have a variety. Like I said, most of our tobaccos have some version of Virginias in it. I know there's some, there's tobaccos that have red Virginias. I'm not really, I don't really know the differences between the colors of Virginias. I just know that like, we have a uh, Green Dragon from uh, Country Squire, part of the Middle Earth series, which is a full, uh, full Virginia blend. And to be honest, it's exactly how they describe it. It is sweet and um, very flavorful. Yeah, Green Dragon. I've gone back and forth on it. It's one of yeah. Did you say it's Middle Earth mm -hmm. series? Um, we got it somewhere around here. The color is just, there's no black to it. Um, just a very brown. It's things on behind you. It's one of those things over there. Um, smokes pretty well. Just generally, for me, I'm not the biggest fan of Virginia's. I deal with the same thing as you deal with. It's almost like it dries my tongue out. It's like, yeah, moisture right off your tongue. And it's a bit sour. Yeah. <clears throat> almost like if you've ever had a sour beer, it kind of does a similar thing where it's like, it just takes, yeah. It takes Although, it right off I like tongue. sour beer. You know, same here. I just, pure Virginia's, I'm not, like, Green Dragon's doable. I'm just not a pure Virginia's. Like, I have respect for Virginia's, like, in a lot of the other tobaccos. But I'm just not, like, don't give me 100% Virginia's. I'm the same way. Not the biggest fan, but it, every once in a while, I like to switch it up from what I'm normally used to. And, you know, maybe I'll get into yeah. something like that. I did just get you that vanilla Virginia that's not that bad. Virginia cream. Virginia cream. Virgin yeah, Virginia cream. By GLPs. And it's, um, I'm just going to take a look at the color of it. I haven't smoked this in a bit. It says, it describes okay, There's, there's a little bit of black in there. So maybe they either... Probably some Cavendish. I mean, they might have added some Cavendish. I can't tell, but um, yeah. So this this smells really good, right off the right off the nose, out of the tin. However, still just not my top half. Of yeah, my top smokes. I might be going out out of the. I think like Virginias and Black Cavendishes are the two that they do a lot of flavoring with. Like this is vanilla and like. The Cavendish's variety of flavors that you can add pretty much any flavor to Cavendish's. I think they also can do that with Virginia's. Like those are the ones that are going to be bringing you the flavor. Like the if they're trying to like do like an orangish flavor. Or like what do we got here? Some of the flavors that they um like the aromatics. Yeah, like you, that's what, another blend. Yeah. Well, it's 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 not a tobacco type. It's a category. So Virginia is a category. It's, it's as a, well as a leaf. Yeah. Aromatics is a category. They typically put a case in on the actual leaf with the flavor. So like it's sort of like an artificial flavoring of Virginia's, maybe even Kentucky's and Creek. Maybe not Creek. Creek is for, uh, for uh, Orientals and Turkish. Basically, the aromatic is just flavored with a case in tobacco. And some of them are more subtle than others. Yeah. More were... expensive ones generally. You almost think, well, oh, this is like a natural nuttiness or a natural cherry, natural raspberry. 
the cheaper ones will be and, and you'll know yeah there's the ones that we have sitting over here that aren't i pretty much never plan on smoking them again it, they're the cheap ones and they can almost kind of make you sick a little bit yeah. it's almost like drinking um like artificial flavoring drinks like i can always tell there's artificial stuff than like a natural yeah. flavor so that's virginia's um the yeah. next is gonna be burley which if you've watched any of our videos i am uh i hate burley as like, of now but we yeah. haven't had too many examples yeah that's the one thing i don't know the ones with burleys in them i know i've never had a pure burley i don't think i mean i might go out of my way to try to find a pure burley but the ones that have burley burn the living hell out of my tongue but burley is a tobacco in the description i should like it but yeah, for some reason exactly why. for which, some which is why i think we haven't had enough of them yet we just had haunted bookshelf if that's even a burley i can't even haunted, haunted bookshelf I remember us smoking it, and I remember saying there's got to be burley in here, and then I think when we read it, there was no burley, which blew my mind. We need to go to the tobacconist, the local tobacconist, and yeah. say, what is your best burley? Give us one or two of them. Yeah. We'll try those. But burley has a nutty and earthy flavor profile. It is often used for blending as it adds depth and strength to the mixture. Burley tobacco can be mild or robust depending on the processing method. Now that I'm thinking about it, we have a, a Nutty Irishman that I also think is a Burley. And they, they named it the Nutty Irishman because I'm pretty sure it's got nutty taste yeah, to it too. I'm not too sure. It sounds like it could be a... I'm not the biggest fan of Nutty Irishman. Me either. Um, <clears throat> but, yeah, I, I feel like according to the description, as well as um, other people on YouTube and what they like, I think that I should like Burley. However, I haven't had a good one yet. And so maybe that's something that I'll shoot for over the next six months to a year. Let's try to get some burleys in our collection here. Or at least strong burleys. I think, like, old Toby that I, I, I can't remember exactly what's all in it, but, like, when you have ones that have a variety of different tobaccos in it, like, I can handle a burley if it's, in like, very mild in the tobacco. Like, it's just, like, they say, like, 5-10% of the tobacco blend. I could probably handle that. But when you're getting up to like half of it tasting like burley, I'm out. Yeah. All right, next is Oriental and slash Turkish. Orientals or Turkish tobaccos come from Eastern Mediterranean region and, and offers a rich and spicy flavor with hints of sweetness. It's commonly used in English and Balkan blends. I'll let you take over. This is, um, this is his favorite category. Closer to my favorite category. I'm definitely a fan of the English, <clears throat> the English blends. And uh, my favorite being, as of now, Heavy English by Sutler. Um, definitely not one that I've even really seen any videos on. It's a accidental stumble upon by a local tobacconist. Yeah, in Pittsburgh. That. Yep. Um, typically, Oriental Turkish is blended with Latakia as well. Which Latakia, um, as far as I read, is an <clears throat> Oriental that is that it goes through like the smoking process of they take the leaves they dry them out in a barn while they you know have they expose them to smoke now one second <clears throat> that specific one the heavy english at least from what the guy told me they smoke it in pine needles oh yeah yeah that's where you got that from yeah okay yeah because i read that um that makes sense now um, i i love latakia i pirate cake is another good one. This one is probably the highest amount of Latakia that we have. and um, Even higher than Heavy English? I believe so. And then this one obviously comes in cake form. Hence the name. Pirate cake. Amazing. I, I, I have not been smoking much English recently. It's the summertime. I'm, you know... S similar to beer. I mean, right now we're drinking a stout, very thick stout. But generally in the summer, I'm more about. I mean, and we're in the Pittsburgh area as well, so icy light, um, our city mango, and uh, Cavendish is pretty much my summers. I'd say. Yeah, it actually, sweeter sounds beer, actually really good. Right sweeter now. tobacco, um, and then coming into autumn and winter, 
is when I'll probably transition back to my Englishes, my stouts. But Englishes can also, I'm a fan of like eating something very heavy and I could smoke a, like a heavy English after eating. Like I'm not going to not smoke them just because of the summer. Like I feel like there's still certain yeah. times like after like a, he a hefty meal. Um, but yeah, we have a bunch here. I don't, I'm trying to think of some other ones that are heavy English, like, um, heavy on the Oriental slash Latakia. Um, I think like Nightcap by, uh, Peterson's got oh, some yeah, Latakia. Yeah. yeah, those have all of that, all of that general Cornell and Deal and Peterson's like early morning pipe, oh, daybreak. Yeah. Quiet night. Actually had daybreak today. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, quiet night, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, so I'm, I'm a huge fan of that. But it, and so that covers Latakia and the Oriental Turkish, which typically they can be together. I saw a pure Latakia out there. I think that's like 100%. I need to get that in the collection. Do you think, how pure do you think the Pyre Cake, pyre cake is? I think it's, it's, for, I, it's been a while. We might be able to research it, but like, I think it's the highest one we got. Okay. Know, like 75, 80, something like that. I think. Interesting. Yeah, so we kind of talked about Latakia, but Latakia, I'll read that. It says it's a tobacco, a type of oriental tobacco that undergoes a special curing process over open fires. That's what it, the, the guy was telling me. They would dry them out. It would, on top of the fire, they would throw like pine needles, which would give it that, at least a heavy English, a pine needle type of taste. You also said Latakia yeah. has a leathery as well as incense taste and I can definitely relate to that. It's just, I think it's Latakia is just a very unique type of pipe tobacco that I'm, I'm just number one for me is Latakia. I'm a Latakia guy here. So, uh, so I guess I just kind of learned some Latakia like we were just saying about the Cavendishes earlier. We'll get to that. But Oriental is the tobacco and Latakia is the is a type of so basically they take the Oriental tobacco and they put it over open open fire, which and they smoke it, giving it. That's what turns it into like the Latakia blend. It says it has a distinctive smoky flavor and is a key component in English and Balkan blends, providing a rich and smoky aroma. We can do a quick intermission too. We'll talk about what we're smoking. Since so you yeah. said Balkan, yeah, I am smoking a plum pudding, and a Balkan um, comes from the Balkan region. Of Europe which is where all the wars have been it's where the, the Muslims and the Catholics and the Orthodox it's just been a battleground for the last thousand at least a thousand years um, plum pudding is the one that's definitely grown on me it started out last year as my least favorite pipe tobacco and now it's up there in my top five at least and um, yeah this one has Latakia Orientals Virginia's Perique and Cavendish and so this is a good English Balkan the funny thing is I can highly suggest this he hated it I know yeah, I hated it I think it just needed to dry out it was very it, it tastes like wet socks <clears> yeah water. exactly comes in chunks like this just crumble them up to be to be specific it, it's it tasted like the smell of wet socks yes that's what you meant because I've never had wet socks <laughs> now I'm smoking Cherokee from by the good old country squire, which like we always said if you've never gone to uh, smoking tobacco I Highly recommend go and check them out first before you waste your time on anything else. They have unbelievable tobaccos This is just a I'm pretty sure it's Cavendish and Virginia's with like a cherry cherry flavor to it We've done a pipe review on this before so sure. Yeah, because we did all the cherries before mm. Yeah, so it's not an individual one. Yeah, it's with uh, the, yeah, all well, the cherries that we reviewed. Um, next is actually very interesting because I just figured this out like a week ago. Perique's. Perique, I'm a little bit of a fan because it's in my favorite tobacco, Old Toby by Country Squire also. It's a unique type, type of tobacco that undergoes a fermentation process. It originates from Louisiana and has a robust, spicy, and fruity flavor. Preek is often used in blending to add complexity and depth to, to the tobaccos. 
Yeah, I'm not, generally I'm not a big fan yeah. of paprika. I don't like anything that I can't slightly inhale through my nose, essentially, basically my nose. Um, that just makes me almost tear up too much. Although in Old Toby, it's I don't know, ass. I don't know the ratio. It's very mild, but it's good. Like I don't think they have a. I mean, I'd like to, to try it out though, but I don't think Perique. Is, there's 100% Perique tobacco out there. There might, there could I don't be. Think it would be that good. It'd be awful, but. probably. But I think it also. We were talking about how you don't like nuts in your brownies. <laughs> yeah. I don't think it definitely adds to the like. I'm not a fan either, but I think it adds just enough to make the brownie taste. I think it adds a little, a little bit, bit of nuttiness. So that's and why some I kind of. Yeah, that's why I kind of think. It's starting to grow on me. But. Yeah, I think that's what kind of Perique does. Where I'm not a fan of it, but I don't know what Old Toby would really taste like if it didn't have it. Yeah. So at a small ratio, I think it's. It, it works. Yeah. Next would be the famous Cavendish. Like everyone that's in the pipe. Uh, smoking pipes, Cavendishes, I feel like everyone loves them. Especially for beginners. Because mm -hmm. it's your fruitier, it's, well not your fruitier, it's your more flavored uh, category. Cavendish refers to a tobacco preparation method rather than a specific type of tobacco. It involves heat pressing and fermenting the tobacco, resulting in a mild and aromatic smoke. Cavendish is often used as a base for flavored pipe tobaccos. Exactly right. So yeah, they can take Virginias and Orientals, put a casein on it. Yeah. And you can get some sort of Cavendish. Black Cavendish are the more sweeter ones. They're pretty much black, obviously, hence the name. Black Arrow being the best. Basically, my favorite tobacco. I, I, it's, it's hard to say. It's in the top three, at least. Um, yeah, we always black get... Cavendish is a go-to. Brown is obviously brown. Um, and there's a golden, and then there's just. Show me, do we have Black Arrow down here? Yeah, Black Arrow, I'll get it. The tobacco, I mean, you can even use that. I'm pretty sure it's Cavendish oh, yeah, yeah. in that. Yeah, is, Look how dark that is. So it's, it's black. Mm -hmm. It's black. So. Black as it can get. Um, th th this one is Heavy Seas by McFerrin. All right, so we have Black Cavendishes. Cavendish you also have um, one of my... At least top five by Gatlin Burlier. Um, what was the flavor called? Her famous one. Uh, yes. The black uh, from uh, not the Mellow Moonshine, but the other one. Case code. Keep code. Okay. Like uh, that's almost a. Oh yeah, it's got cabinet yeah. in the name. Yep. And it's uh, it's um it's got a lot of brown cabinet shit. Yeah, it's not like your, not like black hair where it's like completely black. Yeah, it's not. It, 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 actually, I really do enjoy Caves, Coves, Cavendish, and I just changed their name before. Um, it's not super sweet. It smokes like a chimney, and it's just a good smoke. Not high in nicotine. You don't want any overwhelming flavors. Mm -hmm. You just want to have smoke. Yeah. Next, we're into the. Aromatic, you said it's the cat, it's a category, yeah, because right? there's all these different flavors. It says aromatic tobaccos are typically made made by combining various tobacco types with flavorings such as vanilla, cherry, chocolate, or fruit flavoring. They offer a pleasant room note and are popular among those who enjoy the aroma. So, these are the ones where they say, like, if you're married or a girlfriend. Like, the, the, like, they're able to handle, because it actually smells pretty good. It's almost smoking like a backwoods, like a very flavorful um, tobacco where, like, heavy English is, they can be hard to be sitting around, almost like when someone's smoking a cigarette. Yeah, a lot of these smell like you're at a bar. However, they do not hang, the, the smell of pipe tobacco does not linger. Cigarettes have, I, I can't remember the exact amount, they have hundreds of different chemicals mm -hmm. and ingredients involved. You have one or two ingredients when you're dealing with pipe tobacco. Yeah, so it doesn't really stay on you as yeah. much. We smoke down here, and maybe two days later, don't smell anything. Yeah, down mm -hmm. here. Yeah, down in it the basement. It doesn't go anywhere in the house, nowhere. Um, but yeah, like we, any flavored stuff you have is an aromatic. And then you, yeah, have, so you have aromatic and you have Englishes. Yeah, so there's a big the overlap category. there. So you have like the Cavendish types of tobacco, 
and a lot of those cavendishes are being used in aromatics. So in an aromatic, you're not gonna have typically a lot of like Perique, Kentucky Dark Fire. Did you go over that one yet? Not yet. <clears throat> Things like that. You'll get a lot of the uh, Cavendish blends in the aromatics because it's the sweeter. Um, you know, typically you'd want to smoke the, the aromatics out of the corn cob pipe. Um, and uh, so the Cavendish is sort of a, a natural ingredient in mm -hmm. aromatics. Yeah. So. So basically, well, at least when I like the art tobaccos that we have, I put them in two categories. It's either Englishes slash Balkans slash um, like with your Latakias, and then you have your aromatics. So basically, if you go onto a website, it literally says ar aromatics or non aromatics. That's where those are the two categories. And when you jump into aromatics, it's usually like Virginias and Cavendishes. When you jump into the Englishes, it's usually your Latakias, your Balkans, your Orientals. Um, so the next one is, yeah, English slash Balkan. English and Balkan blends are known for their rich and complex flavor profiles. They typically consist of Virginia, Oriental, and Latakia tobaccos, offering a balance of sweetness, spice, and smokiness. Okay, and so the in English, yeah, so the in English is typically, so, so the distinctions we're having here is between the leaf and the category. Mm -hmm. There really is no category for Oriental Turkish. That's the leaf. And that's typically in Balkans and Englishes. And Englishes. Latakia really is in its own category. It's a leaf, it's prepared a certain way, and it's, I guess maybe unless you get pure Latakia, it's typically the main ingredient in something like an English. And like this is a Balkan here. English Balkan, with a rich blend of Latakia, Orientals, Virginias, Perique, and Cavendish. So this is, and it sort of fits the description of what a, what whenever you hear maybe someone say Balkanize, the Balkans, the actual place in Europe, is just a blend of different countries and cultures and religions. So whenever you hear someone say like, well, America needs the Balkanize, that means you need to break everything down into the smallest community, break up the country and carve it up into the smallest natural groups and so that's kind of it's almost like a natural thing that yeah you know this bulk in here is it has all the different types in it so um but it also refers to the, the, the specific leaf yeah so you have like your virginias is like your main one and your orientals it's it's what you do to them that changes yeah. them to put them in the categories of uh, or where it's grown like in the balkans yeah so now we're down to the last one, which, I mean, there's probably other ones. These were just the top nine. Dark Fired. And the only one that we have here is our, what's that one back there? Kentucky Dark Fired. Yeah. What's it say? It's Old Dark Fired. By McBaron. You able to grab it? Yeah. It's sitting right there. I just can't reach over there. Actually. And this one is cured using intense heat and smoke. It has a robust, smoky flavor and is often used as a condiment in, de in, in blends to enhance the overall character. So they actually press this. It looks like beef jerky. Yeah, so this is a very nice container that they place this in. Nice little golden ticket Yeah. that they put in there. And it's almost like you just want to eat it like tobacco. Except it's Except one of it's my rough. least favorite tobaccos. <laughs> yeah. I really wanted to like this. It burns the living hell out of your throat. Yeah, I really wanted to like this. It's a little bit too rough for me, at least now. It almost seems like an old man, an old person, with like an older person smoke. It's yeah. just, it doesn't have much flavor. It literally just tastes like, um, pain. Like the most smokiest beef jerky you've ever ate in your life. That's what it kind of tastes like. Yeah, it's too much. Um, however, yeah, it has a similar process that Typically, it's grown in Kentucky. It's a tobacco grown in Kentucky. And um, it goes through a similar process as Latakia, where it's smoked like in a barn. Mm -hmm. And um, not with the pine or anything like that. And it doesn't taste, doesn't have that leathery incense taste. Um, it's just darker and uh, rough. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> I think, yeah. I think I'll get there, maybe. 
Yeah, a lot of these, like I said in the last last podcast, I mean, w- one of these days I can literally pr- maybe not like hold Toby anymore. I mean, your taste buds change like all the time. So like maybe one of these days I'll actually like old fired, what is it? Old dark old fired dark fire. Kentucky. But that's kind of all we got here. I'm really enjoying this. What do you got again? The oh, the plum pudding. Yeah, I, I, it's not every day that I smoke this, but I was craving it today, and I figured it was good for the the occasion of going over the different types of pipe tobacco, um, because I'm basically smoking almost all of them right here. Or a big, big. There's no Kentucky in this though, thank God. Uh, but there's Perique. Is Burley in it? Actually, there's no, no Burley. There's no Burley either, yeah. but. It's got a. Good. T- typically, there's not as many ingredients, but it is what it is. Good and, uh, and we're sm- and we're drinking some of your stout that you made. Yep. Finishing up. I only got a couple bottles left. Before I make a summer beer here coming up. Yeah, we're gonna be doing some mead competitions coming up. We got some things you need to bottle. Send those away to some competitions. Hopefully, and, win uh, some here. Yeah, that'd be nice. I got some good ones I'm gonna send in. I think I got a. Well, I know I have a. Uh, Peach bourbon mead that's been in production for the last nine months or more, and a cranberry sauce that I want to submit, which has apple. It's mostly cranberry Curry sauce mead. Yeah, with a little bit of slight bit of maple syrup, a little bit of apples, a little bit of orange. Typically, something that you eat during. Thanksgiving with the cranberry sauce. Made, made a meat out of it. I got a maple syrup meat I want to submit. A nice apple cider, a spiced apple cider um, type of meat. So it's a sizer, it's called. But yeah, so we got a lot of Yeah, we'll be re- reviewing those here. <clears throat> but yeah, just for, at least for this video. Stay tuned if you're interested in any of this kind of stuff. But, Cheers. Yeah, thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe to the channel. Peace.